Hello, my name is Simon Benjamin. I'm the Professor of Quantum Technologies here at the University of Oxford. And I'm also a big Marvel Movies fan. And I just uh, watched Endgame and I loved it. And I wanted to uh, respond to some of the stuff I'm seeing in the spoiler discussions that I now am allowing myself to read because I've seen the movie. And by the way, spoilers in this, in this video. Stop watching this if you haven't seen Endgame. I might also uh, mention Back to the Future and Terminator, Terminator 1 in passing. So I'm also going to spoil those. Please do stop because the movie is great if you go into it with just like no knowledge of what's going to happen. It's fantastic for that reason. Okay, that was your warning. So with that said, what I'm really going to talk about is not generally the science of Endgame, it's specifically time travel. How have they done time travel? Does it work? That's what people seem to be discussing. And I think it does work. It in fact works so well that it's now not only one of my favorite movies, it's one of my favorite time travel movies, along with Terminator 1, as a movie that really does time travel in a, in a good way, a solid way. Um, in fact, it's so good that you can see that what the filmmakers have done or their advisors, is they've gone and looked into what do you get if you try and combine the idea of time travel being possible and quantum stuff, quantum theory, because of course quantum is mentioned a lot as the way that uh, Ant-Man's gear works, so, or can access. So what do you get? What you actually get is a picture that's been, oh, a few people have explored it, but in particular a really great article that was written for the layperson, just for the popular press, by uh, David Deutsch and Michael Lockwood. And uh, I will link that below so you can go and, and look through that. It's a great story. But that's what I think Endgame is based on that vision. And the reason I think that is not just that it, it, it works in that way, it's also that David Deutsch is mentioned, I think. I'm pretty sure. I really would like to just go and check this point. I'm going to see the whole movie again, but I will be listening sharply for this. I think that at one point, I think it's Stark says, um, so you know about time travel, do you? The Deutsch conjecture or you know, Deutsch theory or Deutsch something. So that name, Deutsch, must, I think, refer to David Deutsch, who's a professor here in Oxford, colleague of mine, and, um, and uh, the article he wrote. And so what's in that is uh, the solution to how you can have time travel without the usual paradoxes, which, which would mess things up. So let's, let's just briefly say what that problem is. So the problem, I think, is, is nicely shown by the film Back to the Future, which is a great film. I'm not criticizing it. I love Back to the Future. But it's not the kind of thing you can think about for very long with your scientist hat on without being unsatisfied. Because in, that, in the rules of the game for time travel in uh, Back to the Future, are that you go back in time to your own you know, universe, it's your actual past, and you can, you can perform actions there, of course, because it would be boring otherwise, and the changes you make in the past can change the future that you came from, therefore can change you. And of course, uh, the exciting uh, way to, the consequence of that is you could even change the things that led to your own birth and uh, alter the future so that you don't exist which is great peril for the, um, for the hero in the story. It's, you know, it's a scary um, thing that he has to avoid, but um, that's not really the problem. The problem is that it doesn't make sense. If Marty had prevented his own birth, then he wouldn't exist, and you know, that's the terrible thing that we're worried about in the movie, but think it through. If he didn't exist, then who went back in time and messed up his parents' romance? No one did, and so he does exist. But if he does exist, then he goes back and messes it up, and so he doesn't exist. He does, he doesn't, he does, he doesn't. It's inconsistent. Does, 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 does doesn't, does, doesn't. You imagine that the universe would just have to kind of crash at that moment, right? And big error message comes up saying, uh, I don't know, out of memory, uh, too many recursions or something like that, right? There's, there's, it's in logically inconsistent. So we tend to think that logic underpins even physics. Things have to make logical sense. And that rule has got us a long way in, in understanding the world around us, it seems to be true. So uh, if it were logically impossible for this uh, problem to be resolved, then that seems to rule out that kind of time travel altogether as a, as a legitimate model of how reality might work. You can fix this um, if you say, when you travel back in time, this is not what Endgame does, but this is the, the, the other most common thing in previous movies, um, if you go back in time, you can make changes and they will influence the future, but actually they will just lead to the stuff that happened anyway, that maybe you didn't understand was part of your history, but so you're actually just making the future that you came from what it was. 
you're not actually changing it. And I think that uh, you know, there's a Harry Potter movie that does this, and there's Interstellar. It's you know, I think I can, it's not a spoiler to say there's a, a touch of that in there. But um, the movie that I think does this beautifully is Terminator One. So a uh, an uber intelligent computer, Skynet, from the future invents time travel, which, by the way, is a little bit more plausible, I think, than uh, Tony Stark inventing it in an afternoon in his basement. Uh, but you know, it's not a criticism. I use it. You know, of course, that had to be the way it went. But um, so Skynet, uber intelligent thing, cracks time travel. Uh, just as it is losing a war against a human rebellion, so it tries to use time travel to prevent the birth of the uh, leader of the resistance. But as you finish watching the movie Terminator 1, you realize that Skynet has actually just caused its own future. Its attempt to stop the current, uh, you know, its current circumstances from happening have just brought that into existence. Trying to stop John Connor has actually created John Connor. And there are other beautiful elements in there, in particular the picture is a really nice flavor piece that um, also ties into that theme. The efforts to change the past have just created exactly the future. So that, I think, can be done well. You kind of have, as a, as a narrative, as, a, as an element for a movie, you have to um, only reveal at the end uh, that this is the rules, because otherwise the movie would be boring. If you knew that you couldn't make any changes that alter the future, that would, there would go all the drama. So uh, that's, that's why it's such a beautifully made movie, because you realize right at the end that everything adds up. Uh, but that's not what Endgame has done. Endgame can't take that option, by the way, because the problem is we've got to solve, we've got to reverse what happened at the end of the last film somehow. We've, we're in this disastrous scenario, which is unacceptable, where half the universe has been wiped out. Uh, types of time travel where you go back and make changes, but it doesn't influence uh, the present um, in that particular sense, in the Terminator 1 sense, would not be satisfactory. They need something else. What do they go for? So they look into, as I say, this, this article, this picture that Deutsch and Lockwood presented, which is to say the following. So here we go. Quantum physics has a lot of weird stuff in it that is difficult for our everyday imagination to grasp. Um, the maths we understand, it's actually not that hard. Spoiler that maths of quantum physics is not particularly tough. It's not string theory, um, but it is strange what it seems to be telling us about the universe. It seems that quantum theory says, for example, and this is a famous example that you wouldn't attempt in the lab, but it does seem to be what quantum physics is saying is possible. A cat, or anything, can be both dead and alive at the same time. It's not that we don't know if the cat is dead or alive, it's not that, you know, uh, it's a secret being held back. It's literally both those things at the same time, says the maths. How can we make sense of that? Well, there's a bunch of different ways to make sense of it, and they're sometimes called interpretations. But one which is fairly popular in science, and by far the most popular in science fiction, is to say the answer is there are many worlds, that's uh, maybe the older term for it, or the multiverse is the newer phrase. Uh, there are many universes, really. Uh, in which things are, can look identical uh, between two universes, or a little bit different, or very different. And uh, if a cat seems to be dead, or if a cat is dead and alive at the same time, what we really mean is that in one universe the cat is dead, in another universe the cat is alive, but those universes haven't uh, diverged yet into the cat is definitely dead, definitely alive. So without talking about that anymore, the point is that uh, quantum theory has led us to the idea of the multiverse. How does the idea of the multiverse um, sort out the problem of time travel and paradoxes? How does it allow us to have free, interesting action in the past uh, um, that isn't predestined and uh, yet not lead to the paradox problem? It's simply this. So we are going to travel into the past, but it will be the past of a different universe that until we arrived was identical to the past of our universe but our actions will make it branch off. But there's no, then there's no problem, because we can't, uh, for example, go back and kill our own grandfather and mess up our own birth. We'll just kill the grandfather in that universe and prevent ourselves from being born in that universe, but not doesn't mess with our own existence. Uh, and you can uh, use this idea to then realize you really have very general ability to act and change things in lots of different ways. So here's how, for example, uh, the time heist 
would work in this picture. We have, let's call it Universe 1, is the universe that up till now Marvel uh, movies have st stuck everything in, right? So, uh, uh, the, in particular, the uh, Infinity War, with its disastrous, awesome ending, uh, was in Universe 1. Our heroes are in Universe 1. They are going to time travel back to other universes to uh, steal, or in fact, as we discover, borrow the Infinity Stones that those universes have, bring them into the presence of their universe, use it to build a new Infinity Gauntlet, and then reverse, not, not prevent it ever happening, but reverse the, uh, the snap. Right? So, uh, and so how does it look? It looks something like this. Let's take the example of when they travel back to the, uh, the very cool scene of the original Avengers movie, the New York War. So they go from Universe 1 to, let's call it Universe 2, which up to the, up to the moment that they arrive as time travelers, Universe 1 and Universe 2 are identical. There's no way to tell them apart. But then into Universe 2, pop! are time travelers. They start to take actions which will make Universe 2 diverge away, and it will never uh, perfectly reintegrate with Universe 1. It's now going to be a different future for that universe. But that's fine. There's no inconsistency there, logically. What do they do? They go around trying to find Infinity Stones so that they can bring them back to their time. As I recall, they get two out of three, but one of them slips through their grasp because of Loki, and so now they uh, they missed. They, they, didn't, they scored two out of three, all they need to do is travel again to another point. Now, really, they could either travel into the future or into the same time in another universe or into the past, but for narrative sense and, and just being easy on the, on the brain for the audience, they travel, Stark travels further back in time. So he's then traveling from Universe 2 to another Universe 3. Universe 2 and 3, and in fact 1, were all identical in that point in the 1950s or whatever, before Stark pops in there, meets his dad, has some, you know, touching, actually really nice moments, and manages to get the remaining Infinity Stone, and then brings it back into Universe 1's present. They assemble the gauntlet, you know, the full drama takes place, fantastic scenes, which I'm not going to talk about now, and, uh, you know, with tremendous loss, the goodies win. And now, because they've been informed that this is important for the health of the universe not to lose its in any of its Infinity Stones, they uh, take the Infinity Stones, not using them, but they take them and put them back into the universes which they took them from, and that's also perfectly possible. Um, they can just pop into those universes and replace the Infinity Stone that they borrowed. Um, so it works. I think it's a really nice realization of that model of time travel. I don't know if it's on... I have to think about it a bit more. I don't know if it's on a par with uh, Terminator 1, which is just beautiful as an all-action movie, uh, which, by the way, is an elegant time travel uh, solution. So I have to weigh them up, but they're certainly in the same league currently in my mind. But they remember, they take different models. Terminator 1 is this only one universe. The changes you make are just the things that had to happen anyway. By the way, later Terminator movies just don't, don't sustain that high level of achievement in that respect, or in any respect. <laughs> um, and uh, 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 I, I don't know of another movie, apart from Endgame, that uh, really explores this parallel world as nicely, but then I, there will be ones I haven't watched, so you know, let me know if you want to leave a comment. What should I check out if I like that kind of time travel, which I do. What I really love, though, is that they did, they did the decent thing and name-checked Deutsch uh, for having talked about this. You know, that's really, really, really nice. I was very pleased to see that, and I really hope I didn't miss it. Um, uh, is there anything that's wrong? Well. A lot of people are saying, Gamora, you know, how can she be in the wrong... There's no problem with that. They're saying, how could she end up in the wrong universe? There's no problem there. You, a time traveler can just stay, but they can have been taken by someone else. Or, you know, a time traveler can just stay in the universe that they come to by some means. Now, I can't remember every little detail of the film, so I don't remember how Gamora got to where she ended up, whether she had a time suit or whatever, but as long as that aspect is in there legitimately, then there's no problem. Um, uh, the, the only thing from my memory of watching it the first time through, and I'm definitely going to watch it a second time, the only thing that I think is an issue, but you can sort it out by just adding in some information that we're not told in the movie, is uh, what about um, what is it? What about Captain America? So he goes back to put the time stones back, that's fine, and then he chooses not to come back into the present of Universe 1. He goes to, where are we up to? Universe 4. He goes to Universe 4, way in the past, 
where he can resume the uh, romance that uh, you know he was unable to um, experience uh, in Universe One <laughs> when he was a young man. Uh, he, he he wasn't able to have that romance, so he goes all the way back to the um, early earlier 1900s and uh, in Universe Four. And remember, Universe Four was identical to Universes One, Two, and Three up until the point that Captain America pops in there in his time suit, and now he makes changes. The specific change he makes is that he continues his romance with the love of his life and lives that out. He lives for decades in Universe 4, having that life. Um, but the only point is that how is it then, if he's in Universe 4, uh, being all happy, uh, why is he on a bench in the background in Universe 1 at the very end of the film? The solution to this can only be that he kept his time suit and he kept his pin particles and then uh, after his, his whole life, with the love of his life, has uh, run its course and she's died of natural causes, which by the way, we, we know that she does sometime in the, you know, like, I don't know what, the 2015 time frame, something like that. He then just returns to Universe One, so, and takes off his time suit and goes and sits on that bench, waiting to be discovered at the end of the movie. So there's no problem with that. It just requires a few details that we did not actually hear in the movie, but then it would have been very awkward, right, to just like pause the, the moving thing and Captain says, oh, by the way, just in case you were wondering, I, you know, uh, my time suit's over there. You know, I think there would be no elegant way to do that that would not mess up the, the, the beautiful scene. So we just have to assume that happened and there's no problem, right? So I think uh, that's all I have to say. Uh, if there's elements of the movie that I'm not remembering, please comment because I can check them out uh, when I go back and uh, you know maybe there's some other things that uh, that don't hold up to this picture. Do also look at the article, it's a really fun read, it's quite a long article but you can uh, take some nice stuff out of it that I will link below. But the long story short is, from my first viewing of the movie, it's kind of an overwhelming movie, but from my first viewing of it, I reckon that they did time travel right. And they did it right according to the Deutsch Lockwood picture of how that can work. And these guys are uh, actual physicists, philosophers working in Oxford, and you know they so they, they put tons of thought into this. It's solid, and that's what the movie uh, writers have adopted. So it's great. Uh, it's another aspect of what I think is a fantastic movie.